Hello? Who's that? Oh, what, man? Seriously? Spooky castle? That's what we're doing now? It's not even Halloween. Who said what now? See, I'm just gonna... Nope. I'm out. Hey everyone, um, someone asked me how to do a torch effect or a lighting, another lighting effect, which is really similar to the room lighting tutorial I did, but this one's gonna just be a slightly different. Um, I'm using two pieces of artwork. You can see I made this background and from the beginning intro. In Illustrator, I just drew a castle kind of hallway, and then I duplicated that image and made another one that's just dark but it still has detail in it, so it's visible somewhat um, when you're animating, because you don't want it just black, um, but you can if you want to. So I, I made these two images, and I made them, I duplicated it because they need to be exactly the same for it to, the effect to look right or work. So in Anime Studio, um, it's, it's a very simple masking technique, but then also, there's lots of little things like the candle flicker, um, if you notice the beginning and things like that, are the things that take the longest. But right now I'm just gonna uh, cover the basics. So um, in Anime Studio, I'm starting with a blank uh, canvas and I'm going to import my two images. And you need to uh, import them at the same time because they need to overlap exactly. So, and you can only do this through the file menu. If you try and do it through the layers, it won't do it at the same time. So we'll import them both at the same time. I'll hold shift down and select both of them and then uh, resize them both at the same time. That way they just stay proportional. We don't have to worry about anything uh, messing up. And then we're gonna create a new vector layer and we'll call it mask. And it, we'll just make it a circle again, just like I did in the uh, beginning cartoon doesn't matter what color it is, um, it's not going to be visible when we make it, uh, so we'll just leave it red, um, and then we'll drop the mask to the very bottom, it needs to be on the bottom layer, select the both of the images, and then group them all together, so we'll group with selection, and we'll just call this uh, light, mm, or lantern that's what I used and they're all in the same um, group so we'll double click the group and we'll use masking and hide all is what we want to do so we'll click apply and what that does is it hides both the bright layer or both of the backgrounds the bright one and the uh, dark one um, in in the mask but we don't want the dark one to be hidden so we're gonna uh, double click on the dark uh, image Go to masking and say don't mask this layer and apply so what we have now is the mask is masking the uh, bright layer and if I grab it and move it around it looks like a flashlight because it is um, it's th both of the images are uh, overlapping at the exact same position 
so it looks like a flashlight. Um, the way that you get this to look like it's um, blurry on the sides, you can't actually blur the mask itself um, by using a filter for the fill or any kind of gradients. What you have to do is you have to double click the mask and do a blur radius. And we'll just do like, I think 50 is what I used and apply that. Now it doesn't look like it did anything, but if I render it, you can see that it has a fall off or a gradient fade um, to the uh, image. And um, what I also did is on the dark image, oops, um, I removed the shadows. See on the light image, there's kind of a shadow around the uh, doorway and the barrels. Um, once I move off of that, those are gone also just to make it look like there's actual shadows that are appearing. Um, let me show you again real quick. If I change the masking properties to, let's blur to like maybe 20% and apply. Again, this doesn't show up, but if I um, render it, you can see now it's got a, a lot stronger light. So you can use that for like spotlights or um, things like that. And you can animate this uh, mask as well. So if I go to frame one, and you know, make the mask really small, and then in frame 12, enlarge it. It's gonna look like you're bringing the light source farther away or closer. Um, oops. Like that. And then also, the way that I made that look like um, it was flickering is if you've seen any of my tutorials, you know, I like to use uh, the uh, noise filter. So if I go to the first frame and click on the mask itself, it, uh, and it has all four of the points selected in the frame, I'll just uh, right click on the keyframe and use noisy, and it'll start moving around. Now it's defaulted, it's pretty jumpy like that. And I, if you want it to look more like uh, flame, just change the amplitude and scale. So 0 0.005, 0 0.005, I think is what I used. And let's see how that looks. So it just kind of jitters a, just a little bit, um, which makes it look like a, a flame is creating this um, light effect but um, there are a lot of th so that's just the basic uh, way to do that um, and it's you can see it's really easy if you're having problems here you're like why is this uh, not see-through your mask is probably set to um, it, it might need to you might need to um, select add to mask but keep invisible so that means that the if, if you're seeing a red fill or any color that you choose and it's just showing a circle and not the actual picture that just means that you need to change this to uh, invisible the um, group will recognize the mask but it'll also recognize the color if it's not switched off or turn, turn to invisible that is um, and that's really it. It's really simple, really short tutorial. Um, I'm probably talking more than the intro, but uh, let me see. Let me. I'm trying to think of. Oh, this is another uh, kind of trick, I guess, or technique that you might want to use. In in this animation, I have a picture of a zombie from The Walking Dead in this doorway, and the way that you do that is. You can see as I pull the light over, you can see the zombie. Um, very easy to do. All you have to do is import an image. Um, we'll uh, go back to zero, and I will import. Um, I think I found this demon baby doll. I like the. Uh, 
um, Walking Dead zombie better, but so I'm gonna drag that and put it over the light. Uh, background and you can see I'm just uh, resizing it I'll put it in the doorway and because we're using a mask it's only going to reveal when the uh, mask is over it so if I put it in the hallway let me move the mask so I can see where it is but when I move off of it it completely disappears because now we're only seeing the dark artwork or uh, background so it's a good way to do a reveal in a hallway, or if you want to, you know, I don't know, um, show somebody hiding, or you can use this for a lot of different things. Um, you could use this technique to show uh, hidden writing on walls, you know, have the same exact image. Um, they don't have to be light or dark, they can be the same image, but then use a mask to reveal writing or um, alternate universe or something like that so but that's basically it um, very easy to uh, achieve the effect but um, hard to do the tweaking in my animation I had to make a lantern which was <laughs> difficult to do because I had to animate the lantern with the mask itself and I also um, added a shadow to my character so it kind of looked like there is an actual light source being projected on the side and then there's shadows on the side. And if I double click into my character you can see shadows is turned on. And I have a blur and offset to just make that look like um, he's getting light on this side of his face. And if you look closely I'm animating the lantern separate from my character because for some reason particles or uh, I was having troubles with groups That's inside cool. of groups cool. so I had to go in and keyframe the lantern moving with the spotlight or cool. the, the mask so but if you have any questions comments um, just leave them down below or um, leave them on the anime studio uh, anime studio pro Facebook page and that's it. Thanks.